Hello, welcome back to BS Live. Today I want to show you a bit of a workflow you can do using Blender and some other app so you can turn uh, 2D line artwork into um, 3D. Sort of like a 3D because they're it's an, in 3D and even they, they have some kind of layers. So this illustration was actually just black and white line art by Keita Takahashi. Oh, he, he made games such as Katamari Damacy and this is one of his illustration and I turn it into 3D in Blender and you can see here I could actually simply increase the layering so it's kind of interesting uh, the whole process is actually super simple and at the end uh, you can actually have something that looks like this okay if I could render it Maybe I need a bit of light. Okay, so this one is black and white, and each of the shape is randomized based on this five color. So I can actually change the color randomly, and we have a completely different artwork. So this is a, just a quick doodling. You can actually uh, simply plug in another color ramp. And the color can be using HSV clockwise, and this is probably like color like red and blue, or yeah. And if you plug this random per island, so each and every island of this polygon will be colorized using this color ramp and this random per island. Okay. So let's, uh, let's have a look how we can create this. For artwork, actually, my recommendation is uh, if you have like some kind of sketch, artwork, you, you simply bring it into Blender and use grease pencil and trace over it, and then you do the painting, etc. for the shape to fill. But if you are doing it outside, um, you can actually just use Photo P to vectorize your artwork. So photop.com is online. You need internet and hopefully my internet is working okay so let's create oops file new let's create something uh make it 1024 by 1024 pixel create so background okay it doesn't matter i'm just gonna draw something I tap D and start to draw a bit of shapes. So with line art, you want to keep the line clean. And whenever there is uh, shapes, overlapping shapes, that's something that you can feel. Okay, so that's uh, the idea. Of course, this is just pretty abstract but anyway once you have the artwork I'm just gonna merge it so it's single layer you go to image vectorize bitmap and if you have a good thickness on your artwork right away you're gonna have a result if if your artwork is very thin have very thin line you want to maybe blur the line a little bit and use multiply layer multiple times until the line looks uh, until the line is thick enough so you can get a, a nice vector so you, you just hit OK once you have a result you hit OK and then you save as SVG so if everything works as planned file import SVG scalable vector graphics you just go under downloads and find your artwork there so right away you can see you have half I mean they're overlapping and you get shapes right in this case the shape doesn't seem to be cutting itself 
I was expecting that each shapes will be separate so you can do a couple of things you can maybe just separate it in blender separate by loose part in this case with a curve that's uh, interesting if I convert this into a mesh should be able to separate this guy separate by loose part there we go so they are pretty much separate but they are on top of each other normally I like to have the path still uh, as a curve but you can always convert it back to curve doesn't matter um, if you want this to be clean I can show it to you later but the next step I did was actually using scratch of nodes so I'm using just object ID selector so scratch of is an add-on that I use really often as you already know and you can use this object ID set to get all the objects here and then simply use the value of line to arrange the object so I made a mistake earlier that I am actually using the delta location so I have to undo that Is supposed to be just locations you plug in this guy and now there should be okay should be using the Z axis and then you just give it a bit of value there so they are now on top of each other I mean not on top of each other <clears throat> and you can close this You can, by the way, use also app like Krita to draw your line artwork and then bring it to Blender or use the photo key first. Okay, we have this now. So each and every <coughs> shapes are separate. Uh, would be nice to keep actually the, the black outline. But for now, let's see. Save this. Line art. Each one of them might actually already have the same material, so you just need to go to under shader, use nodes. Let's test test a different color. Okay, it seems already working and so for each random island okay, geometry random per island right you want to use actually color ramp and for each one of them you can you can do it in different many different ways So this is one way so you're not getting we're not getting different color but supposedly um, maybe if we combine it I'll probably gonna create a duplicate and then combine this or maybe use the other trick color ramp yeah, that's actually interesting we're not getting different color So they are using the same material but random per island doesn't seem to be giving 
a different color uh, we should let me stop this so this one is the one that's already combined another way is actually to use a uh, spare chalk to separate the face slightly trickier but anyway this this guy over here if you look from the top view can have different material if you like so let's say I create this make that unique gonna give a different color I don't know what that means a subsurface color no no I'm gonna detach that so use a proper color um, so yeah let's actually get rid of this for now so the color I'm gonna create a unique material for each one of them and just give it a color one by one so this is the manual way <clears throat> Some of you probably already pretty happy that uh, if you are able to do this manually but I think that's, that's actually the case. So instead of painting it uh, using Photoshop you are using Blender and it's already like a line art. Yeah I think this is okay. Normally, if if I think okay, I want to do this procedurally. I want to do this like procedurally. That's not always uh, the best way, because sometimes you want to have control. Yeah, I think this is this is actually quite nice. And you can have control over the the black line. So this is nice as well. File save if you want if you really want to color this procedurally you can um, of course there's a trick um, so like with this guy I'll just call it proc mat procedural material so this one have just a single mesh combined together we want to colorize it randomly using vertex color for each sample so you can use stretch of nodes again and try object vertex um, or objects in rather let's actually turn this off set vertex color so we want to get our objects get selections and we want we want to colorize it using vertex color and we want to separate parts to index so vertices and faces goes here face index or vertex index goes here we should have vertex color being generated on the fly and we want to have random color so for random color I think this is the right way uh, let's see so this guy shader should be coming from vertex color Vertex color name is SP call. And I wonder if this is already working. So SP call. Get selection, pause. Ok, 
okay the color coming in like that okay let's try face index I kind of wonder if there is something that I forgot to do random number strike float goes into HSP and this guy should probably go to emission if I un unplug the index So this guy have a lot of okay this guy have a lot of face maybe that's why so look at this guy and look at the faces all the subdivisions triangle topology if you use uh, limit dissolve you can get rid of all of those so you end up with just the face that way you can actually colorize the face so yeah this is uh, the procedural way I think this is correct ah yeah okay there you go it's a uh, like I said it's trickier if you're to do it procedurally however it's this is also an interesting workflow right so vertex color from sphere chalk this actually works and I'm pretty happy and this one colorized manually each and every shapes are separate you can actually have a single mesh with a multiple material that's also gonna work whatever you feel like it's working it's uh, however it's more recommended if you are using vertex color if your game engine supporting it and you have this artwork and anytime you can always solidify to get a, some kind of thickness to your objects and look at this let's see vertex color turn on cavity turn on shadow so this is kind of nice and this is one is using cycles or oh, oh, actually using EV okay you can use cycles more realistic EV real time but yeah there you go that's a how you turn something like a, an artwork line artwork and then you vectorizing it using photo P you bring it into blender using SVG and then you colorize it procedurally or manually for each and every shapes um, so yeah, for I show you the the artwork that I use the from Mr. Takahashi. It's looking something like file import SVG downloads. You can see how complex this one is actually. Is. There you go this is the original artwork it's pretty complex it's got a lot of, lot of layers but like I said the process is super simple this is all the all curves single material we use spread chalk nodes simply use object ID selector and object ID set set location change this type to curve in this case and then you can use line plug the line in here z and then increase this number and then you adjust the size of the line so you end up with this okay so that's actually the whole process and this guy by default is not nodes i just change it to nodes change to white color Yeah, and add shadow and copy. 
and this one's all made of multiple curve the funny thing with blender with recent blender you can actually select all the grid uh the curve and then simply right click and convert it into grease pencil and if it's a grease pencil each one have a different material and you can actually fill it with color so this is also another method so there are plenty of ways you can work on this whichever you like uh, whichever fancy you uh, will work with grease pencil with actually it's slightly slower on my Mac but on blender 2.83 it's gonna be faster I believe so there you go that's how you turn line art into something that you can work in 3d in blender thanks again for tuning in and I'll see you next time thank you bye